Good evening, gamers. Just kidding, hi, it's me, your plant mom. Drink water your meds and walk your water. I'm gonna tell you about some plants that are really easy to share and other plants that are not really easy to share. I.e., your friend comes over, you wanna give them a propagation, you wanna be nice, but you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally give them a plant that might literally take three to five months to start growing for them. In this guide, I'm going to tell you about all the best plants that you can share with your friends extremely easily and four notable ones that you should definitely stay away from unless you're a seasoned grower. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and also join the YouTube channel memberships. It helps support me in doing this content full time. Let me know in the comment section down below before the video even begins what your favorite plants are to share with friends or what your favorite plants Thank you so much for all the support on my videos since being back. I was actually worried I was gonna come back and continue posting and people would just like forget that I existed. And you definitely have not forgotten that I exist. So that makes me so happy. Pretty sure the first video I put up after the 12 day break got 7,000 views in only a day, which is a pretty big deal for me to come. Like when you start posting again after not posting in a while, YouTube usually won't really recommend your stuff. So I just wanna say I really appreciate all the extra love for the next week going forward. Any extra watch time or comments down below, just engaging with my content in some way will definitely help me if you want to support me in a way that doesn't cost you anything. Let's start off though with what plants are extremely hard to share. As in these plants either take a long time rooting or their propagation rate is just less successful than those of the other varieties. A long time ago, almost like two and a half years ago, I did a giveaway that included a cutting of my Monstera Peru. At the time, Monstera Peru, the normal variety, was kind of difficult to get a hold of at all. So I felt really excited about the fact that I was giving someone an opportunity to win a cutting in this group giveaway that I was doing. What I did not know is that Monstera Spa Peru or Monstera Carsteni Adam, the two names are interchangeable, is a notoriously slow rooter if you don't first air layer it and also if you're not propagating it in an extremely humid environment. So I took the cutting, let it chill in water, then I ended up holding on to it for two months after the giveaway was over because I was like, hey, let me get some roots on this because in the past, the philodendron I had propagated would start to get like water roots or aerial roots in like two weeks. But then one month went by and I was like, hey, I sent a photo, like it still hasn't rooted. Then after two months, they were like, hey, you can just send it my way and like, I'll figure it out. And they ended up messaging me four months later showing me that only just then had it started to root. I was so embarrassed. I was like, all I did was let someone win a chore. So yeah, Monstera Spa Peru is incredibly difficult to root. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the right environment for it, maybe hold back on giving a cutting of one of those to your friends if they pop on over to your house. That does include the variegated Monstera Spa Peru. The next one, also really embarrassing. Raven ZZs, okay? You can actually propagate raven zizis from even just a leaf. However, that does not mean the plant is going to like it and give you what you want. My mom has been propagating a raven zizi cutting in just water in an unhumid environment, right? A casual growing environment for a year and a half now and it literally only just has some baby roots going on. Of course, if you had an optimal growing situation, like grow lights and good humidity and a good watering system, you know, it would probably root a lot faster, but a lot of people don't have, you know, greenhouse environments. Stuff like this is expensive and hard to do, and most people have a casual growing situation. So if you give your friend a cutting of your variegated Raven ZZ or a Raven ZZ or something, you know, like maybe even just a normal ZZ, that is going to take a really, really long time to propagate. Just be aware. Some plants, you know, it's just not worth it. The next plant type on this list might actually surprise you, but most syndapsis varieties are actually really incredibly difficult to propagate in a casual growing situation. That does even include syndapsis exotica, syndapsis archerius, syndapsis, you name it. Like they are just not the easiest growers when it comes to casual situations. Now, if you give us Syndapsis a ton of humidity and grow them in moss, I've seen they do grow a little bit faster than they would if they were just in water or a low humidity 
situation. However, the fastest I've ever gotten a syndapsis no throw in was, I think, two months. Syndapsis are one of the prettiest varieties. It's definitely fun to grow them in yourself and to deal with, you know, oh my gosh, like, why is this plant so hard? And then you come out of it in a couple months and it's like, oh my gosh, now I have one. You know, just keep in mind that this is a plant that might not be the best to share with some of your newer houseplant friends who are still kind of learning stuff and might have a more casual environment. Hoya carnosa compacta varieties. That includes Mauna Loa, Hoya carnosa compacta variegata, and just the normal emerald carnosa compacta. Hoya in general are a little bit difficult to propagate if you don't have the right situation. A lot of people use prop boxes or they root them in moss. My first experience with rooting a Hoya Carnosa Compacta was in a casual environment in my college dorm. Jenna Marbles had one in her video that she got as a cutting, so I went to Lowe's. They randomly had them in those little styrofoam green things in a cup of water. <laughs> I brought it home, started rooting it. I don't know that I ever actually ended up rooting that. I think it might have just like I think I gave up. It. I remember after three months, it had some roots in water, but it like just wasn't doing anything. And I was like, what is going on? And I think I asked someone and they were like, yeah, those are notoriously slow growers if you don't have the right conditions. Hoya are interesting. People make these care videos, right? And they're like, how to take care of Hoya? With every genus, not all the plants in that genus have the same care conditions. Compact and more expensive varieties of Hoya tend to benefit from a higher humidity situation, higher light situation, more specialized care. However, Hoya like Pupicalyx and Multiflora and Hoya Bella, things like that, Linearis, they thrive in casual environments. When you watch a video on YouTube and it's like, here's how you grow Hoya, and it's very vague advice, that's kind of the experience I had trying to figure out what was going on with mine. And all I could see was it's supposed to have rooted by now and grown by now, but it's not. So unfortunately, like, I don't even know what happened to that plant, but hopefully it's in a better place now. The final plant that is kind of ridiculously hard to share is your rare anthurium hybrids or whatever cultivars that you have. I myself, only just for the first time the other day, I think like a month ago, propagated one of my anthurium. My friend Sydney came over and she loves anthurium. We were doing some trades and I was like, you know what? Do you want me to, like, I wanna try propagating some anthurium. Do you want some of these anthurium? And so I propagated them and it worked very well. My plants are still doing very good. The ones that are bottom cuts and top cuts, I literally cut a ton of my anthurium for her and they're doing really well. The only thing is that when you do propagate anthurium, it is a little bit more dicey. The nodes are extremely close together and your odds of losing a leaf in the process are extremely high due to how anthurium petioles, the base of the petioles, actually connect to the stem of the anthurium. Something that anthurium can end up doing is they can end up making pups, which is a second plant that grows off the side. Then what you can do is you can actually divide the plant into two propagation. It's a propagation method called division that doesn't actually include in most cases actually cutting the plant or you're cutting the plant just a tiny bit to separate the two separate plants that are growing together. Notably, this is how alocasia do grow. So if you're, you have a friend come over and you have an alocasia and they're like, can I have a cutting of that? And you're like, yeah. And then you cut them off a cutting of your alocasia and then they take that home. That will unfortunately never grow. <laughs> so that's just a little note. Watch some videos. I was gonna make a video on how to propagate anthurium. I don't feel like there's a whole lot out there. I know that the plants meow, Ella, she has made Instagram content before where she has propagated anthurium on camera. So I'll, I will link her in the description if you're wanting to do this and in a near future and you want some advice from someone who is like an expert anthurium grower. Now, without further delay, let me tell you about the plants that are very easy to share and you should definitely share with your friends if you're given the opportunity. Number one on this list is as you probably guessed, spider plant. Spider plants make babies all of the time. They actually self like they flower and then self-pollinate and then create babies for themselves. And then they grow off and that's why you get these beautiful, beautiful spider plants that just have so many babies growing off of them. They are so incredibly easy to propagate. They are usually the most notoriously prop lifted plants where people like cut little babies off, which I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to do it. You should always, you know, do things that aren't going to possibly get you in trouble so that you can look out best for yourself. But you know, there's worse things in the world. Spider plants, you can 
very easily propagate by actually cutting the stem that the spider plant is in. I'm actually growing a spider plant in a terrarium right now and it is doing really, really good. The chunky aerial roots that kind of come off the baby pups are super duper thick, uh, almost kind of like orchid roots. And so they just do very well, surprisingly, in high humidity situations as well as extremely low humidity situations. The only thing is that spider plants do need more water than your typical philodendron on a weekly basis. So I would water them whenever you water your peace lilies. But this is an excellent plant to give to a starter casual plant parent or someone who's just coming over to your house. The next plant on my list is actually going to be the philodendron micans or any philodendron heteraceum variety. I specifically wanted to list micans because a lot of people have micans. A lot of people also have the variegated heteraceum. But let's say a friend comes over to your house and they see a micans and then they see a normal green heteraceum. Generally, I feel like people are going to be more interested by the fact that there's a plant with velvet leaves because when I discovered that that was a thing, I was like, are you kidding me? Mykins is a super easy plant to share. I literally take cuttings of mine all the time and just stick them in random place in places in my Ikea cabinet and my red stuck cabinet. They do extremely well, even in highlight situations. I have one right now. It's not variegated, but it is turning like pink and orange because of how like sun stressed it is. And it just looks really pretty. So since we're on the topic, I should probably talk about how you actually propagate a plant. Should you, you know, want to propagate something. There's multiple multiple different methods of propagation. The most common is a cutting, which is where you take a plant and you cut it with sterile scissors in between two nodes. Nodes for beginners can be kind of hard and stressful to locate because you don't want to make a mistake. Like everyone loves their plants. They don't want to accidentally hurt their plant or kill their plant when they're about to perform surgery on it, basically. There are some plants, however, that have different anatomy than other plants. For example, philodendron have stems, petioles, and then their leaves, obviously. The stem is the thick part of the plant that actually connects down into the soil and into the roots. Petioles are the smaller stem that comes off the main stem and attaches to the leaf. And the leaf is obviously the leaf. Gonias, on the other hand, actually have a rhizome and then a petiole and then a leaf. They don't technically have a stem. The rhizome is technically the stem, but it's, it's called a rhizome for a reason. Alocasia also have their corm is what it's called. Um, and then from the corm is where its petioles are connected. I don't actually think alocasia petioles are called petioles. Um, and then that actually connects to the leaf. Like I said earlier, alocasia can actually only be propagated by division or tissue culture, I think you wouldn't ever really want to try taking a cutting. It's always cringy when you're on Reddit and you see someone be like, plant hasn't rooted for me, it's been two months. And it's like an alocasia leaf with a little petiole and it's just in water. And it's like, oh, you had all the good intentions, but unfortunately it's a very common mistake. Philodendron, Monstera, Syndapsis, all the typical common vining house plants have the easiest stems, petioles and leaves to locate. They also can form aerial roots, which are these little brown things that will kind of stick out around the general area of the node. Sometimes there won't be an axillary bud, very rarely on a part of the plant that you might be taking a cutting of. So it's very important to make sure that there is one there before you do take a cutting. Very rarely will there not be. However, it's more common than you would think that they're just missing. If you can't locate an axillary bud, it's possible that it's actually located under the current leaf where the current leaf is actually connected to the stem. Uh, and so you wouldn't be able to see it without removing the leaf. Generally, you can feel for it, but if you don't have a leaf, let's say you're taking a cutting of a runner, right? Like an oblique runner or something. And it looks like there's a node there, but you're like looking around the node, the bald little node, and you just don't see an axillary bud, it is occasionally possible that plants won't make axillary buds. So you'll definitely wanna make sure that your plant, depending on what it is, does have an axillary bud. You're gonna to wanna to cut in between two nodes. Occasionally, philodendron are extremely close together in terms of their node spacing. All the plants that I'm talking about on this list have very decently distant node spacing, or it doesn't really matter. Like they'll recover very easily. For example, later on this list, I do have pink princess philodendron, which can have nodes that are more close together. With micans though, you can take any cutting in between any of the nodes. However, it is important to note that if you're not air layering something first, if you take a very large cutting and hand it off to your friend, they you might find that the leaves on the cutting start to die because there's not actually enough roots to support that kind of cutting at the moment. So it's always better with these things to only do at most, in my opinion, three leaves per 
of these small like philodendron cuttings. Propagating philodendron micans is going to be the same as propagating philodendron heteraceum, variegated philodendron heteraceum, philodendron brazil, philodendron rio, like all of all of the philodendrons that are of the heteraceum variety. The next plant on this list I want to talk about is a less commonly collected plant but it's called ficus villosa. It doesn't look, it, it is in the same genus as ficus lirata or fiddly fig or your rubber trees which are ficus I think elastica or something, I don't know. However, ficus velosa is actually a small climbing ficus that actually grows in extremely humid environment. And because of that, it actually grows ridiculously fast. This plant you can cut and then just stick, stick into a moss wall and it will just take off. I've taken multiple cuttings and just stuck them in different places. I have had to cut it multiple times and I just like have to give away the cuttings because people don't know what it is. So they don't wanna pay for it, at least in my area. So I usually just just be like, hey, do you, do you want a ficus velosa cutting? And they're like, what is that? Ficus velosa, if you do end up getting a hold of it, is a super, super good plant to have. So yeah, I think ficus velosa is a great thing to give friends because it grows extremely fast, even in lower humidity environments, and it grows so fast in humid ones. Fuzzy, heart-shaped vining plants. They're just fun. I highly recommend sharing your ficus velosa. The next plant I want to talk about, kind of in tandem, tandem, tandem? Tandem is begonias and peperomias. Begonias and peperomias, for most varieties, you can actually, well, all peperomia, but for most, almost all varieties of begonia, you can actually propagate from a stem cutting, a leaf cutting, petiole cutting, or like a rhizome down to the roots. Peperomia are the same way. You can propagate all peperomia from either their like, I think they also have a rhizome, but maybe I'm wrong and it's called like a corm or something, but also them from their petioles and their leaves as well. Well, all parts are extremely propagatable and you don't need high humidity situations in general to propagate common begonias and common peperomias. There are obviously exceptions to that rule. For example, like most of any expensive begonia that you find that's not a Rex begonia or some very strong hybrid, most begonias that are higher higher in price tend to want more humidity, like a lot, a lot of humidity. And peperomia also do grow better in high humidity situations. However, sharing them with your friend, it, they will do as long as you're, again, not giving someone like a cutting of a Darth Vidariana and they're sticking it in water out in the open in their room, you know what I mean? For these common peperomia and these common begonias, they're extremely easy to share. I do encourage it. They'll probably be fine also. Like it's hard to go wrong with these ones as long as, you know, you keep them in water water or in moss or in a little prop box situation. The next plant actually on this list is going to be the philodendron small silver. This is a less known about variety of philodendron. It's actually not very expensive. Plant used to be called philodendron species Ecuador glossus or glaucus. Uh, however, it did recently get kind of co-opted to be called philodendron small silver because it's extremely small philodendron that is also silver. So Raymond's kicking the tripod. What are you doing? This plant grows extremely fast. Uh, also, if you just put it in a high humidity situation, it will absolutely pop off. I think mine give me like a new leaf every one and a half to two weeks. So you really can't go wrong with this. Philodendron in general are pretty easy to propagate and share with. Uh, that's why I do have so many <laughs> on this list. The second to last plant on this list is Philodendron Burley Marks Fantasy. This plant also, like the Ecuador Glossus, is extremely fast growing, extremely easy to propagate, especially from nodes. If if you just had a note of this, you'd be able to grow it in pretty fast. I would recommend growing this one in a more humid environment, but some people do keep their, their philodendron burly marks fantasies out in the open. And if they're a larger, more mature plant, they do completely fine. It's totally up to you in your own growing conditions. Also, whatever zone you're in, also whatever zone you're in will definitely affect how these plants grow in your general care. Take your meds. Mental health tastes so good. The last plant on this list I'm going to talk about is the philodendron verrucosum. Can be a little bit... Shut up. I took my meds. This plant can be a little bit more difficult to propagate if you have specific varieties of varicosum. There are a lot of varieties of varicosum. Too many. I think like there's over 50 varieties. There might even be more than that. That might be a very conservative estimate. However, there's a lot of them. And the standard one, which is kind of the lime green, the red backs are very easy to propagate. They grow so fast. They are underneath my Hale Actually, they might even be on par. They are probably my fastest grower. 
they give me like a leaf every week week and a half to two weeks. Four different varicosum right now that started as like one leaf propagations I got from a local gal who I did a trade with. And all of them already have three or four leaves. So varicosum is also a fun one to trade. It's another one of those velvet leaf philodendrons that new people seem to be pretty in love with. So honestly, any philodendron, you can't generally go wrong if it's a vining philodendron. So anyways, that is it. That's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and also support me in the YouTube channel memberships if you can. It's only $5 a month and you're helping support a small creator continue to make content full time. Any of the plants that I listed would be absolutely amazing to share with your friends, take to plant swaps, things like that. So definitely, definitely go for it or just take propagations for yourself because you want more plants but don't want to spend more money. Propagating plants is an amazing way to get more of the plants you already clearly love because you have them for free. So it's super fun. Let me know down below if there's other plants that you think are notoriously hard to root or I maybe missed on this list that are super easy to propagate. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to, I already said that. Thank you so much to Botanicas, Kim Klanowski and Lauren Alexandra for the extra and continued channel support. Don't forget to join the discord. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Also share this video with your friends, with your friends, if you wanna like go the extra mile. Walk your meds and hose your water.